Yeah, let's do this. All right. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Paul Delaria, and this is Do Hard Things Tech View, uh, where our goal here is to inspire, inform, and immerse you in the technologies that drive AWS and cloud. So, uh, Ernest Mueller, welcome to Do Hard Things Tech View. Thanks for joining us today. Howdy. Thanks, Paul. Now, my understanding is you're the director of engineering at one of our great partners, Six Nines. That's right. Uh, uh, I head up uh, one of our uh, halves of our technical team here at Six Nines. We're a uh, cloud and DevOps consultancy uh, that uh, help people move into the cloud and help uh, people improve their ability to use the cloud. Uh, I've been awesome. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, uh, I've been leading technical teams for about uh, twenty years. Uh, mostly, mostly product teams, DevOps teams, uh, uh, and I decided to try my hand in the uh, consulting space, uh, and it's been a lot of fun so far. I also author a line of LinkedIn learning courses on DevOps. Uh, so if you're sitting there being like, "He looks familiar," I wonder why uh, that I get that uh, from, uh, time to time. Cool. Well, yeah, I'll have to check out those DevOps courses. I just uh, clicked connect on uh, LinkedIn with you, so. Looking forward to uh, learning more about that. Tell me a little bit about Six Nines and uh, and kind of uh, what we're here to talk about from a technology perspective. We're I, I was pretty excited when you uh, agreed to come on board, share your story. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Uh, so uh, we're you know we're a uh, AWS Premier partner, um, and we. You know, we help people with custom app development, with uh, cloud engineering, uh, but there's a couple areas where we've uh, really had a lot of kind of repeated uh, success with clients. And one is with uh, uh, setting up HPC infrastructures uh, and stuff uh, in kind of the data lakes uh, 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 area. And then also um, studio in the cloud, which is what I'm here to talk about today, uh, where we help you know, gaming, media, and entertainment studios uh, uh, move their operations uh, into the cloud. Awesome, studio in the cloud. So it's kind of taking like a virtual or a, a real uh, studio where, uh, create, cre you know, where they create content and moving it into a virtual world. That, that sounds amazing. Um, tell me a little bit more about that. What kind of business problem and technical problems and challenges did you see along the way? Absolutely. So I, the the primary challenge I think that uh, many different organizations are facing right now is just simply working from anywhere at any time. Um, organizations are moving to remote work, even for local employees. At the same time, uh, talent in the form of both employees and freelancers is uh, becoming available globally. And you wanna work with the best no matter where they happen to live. Um, and the one of the challenges in doing that is high-end equipment can be hard to get nowadays, uh, especially in a timely manner. There's risk and expense uh, in sending it, as well as kind of your code and creative assets, out to your distributed talent rather than managing it centrally. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, you know, from from my perspective, from a from a business perspective as well, it sounds like you know it's a productivity problem. You know, gone are the days where you can just put a bunch of creative talent in a room and give them a goal and, you know, lock the door. You literally have to uh, meet them where they are in, um, in order to meet your productivity goals and also keep your expenses in line um, so you can create amazing content that people will want to consume in a, in a cost effective way. Definitely. And, you know, you're collaborating within your team with content partners. Uh, you know, it's a, you're in a very real sense, your people have become a cloud, right? And so that means that the cloud is the best way to empower their work. Um, the studio in the cloud as uh, a six nine solution that accelerates building out an entire remotely accessible, easily manageable, high performance virtual studio uh, that's suitable for demanding graphics, gaming, and production needs, and that fits your own unique workflow while keeping everything inside your cloud studio. And that lets you enable global talent, hit deadlines faster, collaborate around your content, and stop content leaks. Yes, security is job zero in any any cloud, especially in AWS. And 
in order to take advantage and earn the trust of our customers, you know, we have to take, you know, we have to stop content leaks and ensure that security is, is done right and done, done at every level along the way. Absolutely. Ernest, question for you, you know, this is do hard things tech view. And, you know, we're people that are watching this are probably like, I'd like to see what this looks like. Do you have any kind of visual aids or reference architecture that you can share with us that we can walk through? Absolutely. Let me share uh, share my screen and uh, I'll start by kind of showing our yeah. reference architecture. And uh, then later on, we can move on to a demo as well. So at a high level, uh, what we do is build out a self-service cloud studio in your cloud account with all the software services and tools you need. And since it's all in your account, all the pieces of the solution can be fully customized to your needs. And you can take the code and customize it yourself too. And it's all uh, using standard AWS services and open source. Um, we've set studios uh, like this up for a number of top tier gaming companies, including our friends at Gearbox Software, uh, who uh, are publishers of Borderlands. Um, it's also in use in standalone media and entertainment studios like uh, Mechanism Digital and Art Jail and advertising studios like Swift Response. Yeah, that's great to understand. Uh, <clears throat> so this is a kind of a reference architecture built off a real world example of a customer that's deployed studio in the cloud. That's right. Maybe, maybe Ernest, you could walk me through. I, I see you have programmers and artists, uh, you know, with PCs and games in the upper right hand corner there. Can you kind of explain what a day in the life of a, of a, of a virtual artist would be like and how they would uh, leverage all this cool infrastructure? For sure. Uh, so, uh, so from the artist end, we have a uh, kind of self-service UI uh, that lets them, lets them go in, see what uh, workstations and storage uh, have been provisioned for them. Uh, and you know, basically, uh, uh, you know, click click to connect, uh, and the, they're using either uh, one of the industry leading uh, display protocols uh, suitable for creative and gaming use, uh, Teradici's PC over IP, uh, Amazon's Nice DCV or Parsec, uh, so that they get 4K resolution, high frame rate, high color accuracy. Uh, and they have local hardware support for peripherals like game controllers and art tablets. Um, this integrates with your own SSO or Active Directory so that uh, it's all single sign-on both to uh, the, the cloud UI and to the actual workstations. Yeah, this seems, that's great. It, it shows that we're really focused on the uh, end user experience and allowing them to consume the technology in the way that allows them to be uh, most creative as possible. But I'm, I'm interested, you know, this looks like a lot of boxes in a very um, complex architecture. How do you take something complex like this, you know, in, in TechView and, and, and simplify it, right? Uh, you know, can you walk me through that end of it from an infrastructure perspective? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's the real trick. Um, so what we do is we build out the networking and server infrastructure as code using Terraform uh, in AWS. Um, with secure network connections to your on-premise systems or other cloud providers as needed. Um, we also build out a virtual image creation pipeline in Packer to create default Windows and Linux workstation images with the software and configuration that you want available to your users. Unreal Engine, Visual Studio, Maya, Blender, Adobe, whatever clients and plugins uh, that people need. Yeah, so Ernest, I've, I've heard you mention Terraform. I heard you mention uh, Packer. I bet you there's probably some secrets management being done here with Vault, or it could be done here with Vault, which leads me to kind of one of the things that I like to think about when it comes to you know choosing your cloud, which is you know um, choice, right? Having the ability to choose the technologies that make it uh, you're most comfortable with. So you have you mentioned HashiCorp products and you've mentioned Windows services. Tell me a little bit more about uh, the choice that you've in the in the choices you've made here and why you chose those particular partners to work inside of these environments with six nines. For sure. Um, so from a HashiCorp perspective, um, 
we we really like the uh, HashiCorp tooling, Terraform, Packer. Um, they allow us to really develop our infrastructure as code uh, and you know in a cross cloud manner. Since they're open source, we can extend them uh, as needed. Uh, and we also find that their technology is commonly understood by just the, the technical world in general so that people working uh, for clients are likely to uh, uh, you know, have, have had some expertise in them uh, so that they're more comfortable with them as well. Um, from a Windows perspective, uh, absolutely. So, you know, so I, I would venture to say the majority of uh, the, you know, development and creative apps are happening in Windows environments. Uh, and so it's very important to us to provide a Windows environment that, you know, works just as well as, you know, as a, a Windows environment that happens to be in your office or whatnot, uh, uh, hooked up to Active Directory, managed via GPO policies. Uh, you can use all the tools and techniques uh, that, that, you know, anybody that knows how to install your creative apps on Windows can uh, easily use this as well. Awesome. Yeah. Choice is, choice is important. Um, so is experience and innovation and, and scale. Now, you know, I, I see you're using, you know, we've talked about this, you're using uh, GPU processors, which, you know, is kind of a, kind of amazing, really, if you think about uh, being able to take advantage of GPU processing. Um, tell me a little bit about your experience uh, working with GPU processors over time. So, Definitely having, having GPU processors available is, uh, is a super critical part of being able to build uh, these uh, sorts of workloads out in the cloud. Um, you, you can run these workstations kind of with any, you know, any size but, uh, and assign them to given users. But uh, it, it's really the GPU availability in the cloud that is making this possible. Um, just maybe five years ago, that wasn't even something that existed. So uh, uh, if, you, if you really needed GPU acceleration, you were just you know, doing it with, with physical workstations, that was just the way it was. Um, right. But uh, 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 Amazon has you know, gone through several uh, different revisions of, uh, of GPUs in the cloud now. Uh, you have your choice between uh, NVIDIA and AMD. Uh, uh, graphics. Um, there's the most of our implementations have used the G4 uh, DN instance types, but uh, there's an even newer G5 with more powerful uh, uh, GPUs available uh, that really make you able to push uh, uh, you know, gaming, creative, GIS, CAD workloads uh, uh, into the cloud where that was absolutely uh, not possible uh, just a few years ago. Yeah, that's the one consistent message we hear from all Amazon customers and AWS customers, which is, you know, we want more choice, we want faster innovation, and we want more scale. So the next generation of GPU processors, I'm sure, um, you know, being able to have access to them faster will allow these people to, you know, increase their productivity and lower expenses and create even more um, wonderful content for their end users. That's correct. The, the, there's a big difference between, you know, hiring a new person and saying, okay, I need to buy a workstation, get it shipped to them. Uh, right now that can take a month if you're, you know, if, if you can get one. Uh, with this model, you onboard a new person immediately. Like all, all they need is just a commodity, uh, commodity laptop of you know, Mac, PC, uh, uh, Linux, whatever they have. And suddenly they have a, uh, you know, kind of click of a button Here's GP workstation has all the software on it there. They can be productive, uh, uh, you know, first, first part of day one. Yeah. It also delights your, uh, your, uh, employees experience as well. Last question on your reference architecture before I, we get back into the demo, we go to a demo, which I, I I'm looking forward to, but I noticed you have some storage and some file storage services here. And I'm, I'm just thinking about, you know, how do you, how did you? How do you make a file storage server available across, you know, an on-premise system which you have in the in the bottom through a cloud to a, a zero client where an artist can use it and and, and make it performant? So great question. Um, so so definitely in in kind of these studios, we you know we provision 
file storage, build and render farm, source control, uh, other AWS services like Elemental Suite and interactive video streaming as, as kind of people need. But the storage is, is you know, really the key to, to making things uh, uh, fast. So what we do, uh, we, we can use uh, some of the slower options, but we really love FSX uh, file systems, both for Windows uh, and Linux uh, in AWS. Um, when the, my my demo workstation I have, I can I can run you know an Unreal project or a Blender file off of my local, or off of you know my mounted FSX drive, and it takes the exact same amount of time uh, to load. So very high performance, directly mounted to the workstations, um, and then of course uh, uh, you could sync those with on-premise uh, storage uh, uh, using a, a variety of. Uh, uh, Amazon services as well. So um, some, you know, some of our some of our clients just want 100 cloud, but others that already have on-premise systems moving into the cloud, uh, being able to sync uh, from <coughs> on-premise, from you know, they might have an SNS Evo, they might have you know some other sort of storage array uh, that they still want to use, and so uh, uh, keeping all that uh, synced up is uh, 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 super important to them. Yeah, I agree. And it really shouldn't be about where does the uh, technology exist. It should be about what's the end user experience like and how do we continually innovate to improve it, um, you know, in a constant improvement environment. So, Ernest, thank you for sharing this reference architecture. I really appreciate it. But I, I have a question for you. You know, this is TechView and, and we do like to see the technology um, in, in, in demonstration form. Can you, uh, you mentioned a, a customer. I was wondering if you could kind of walk us through, you know, a, a demonstration uh, of, uh, of what this looks like. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, here I'll bring up a demo. This is going to be a system similar to what we uh, set up for Gearbox uh, software. Um, and it's, you know, help them reduce onboarding times uh, from, you know, a week to an hour for a person, uh, reduced, uh, uh, you know, build and render times. Um, so essentially uh, you log into the interface. I'm gonna show you the uh, administration interface first. Um, you know, AWS services, there's, there's a lot of them operating in the cloud can be complex. Um, so, you know, we, we develop custom UIs that let you um, provision storage arrays, see your users, C and provision workstations, just all click of a button, right? So you can have, uh, uh, you know, somebody, uh, somebody in your organization say, great, I want a new, you know, I want a new GPU workstation and you just click, click, click and, and uh, then it's there. Um, awesome. And then the artist experience is even, uh, even simpler. So I'll switch over um, to the artist console so here, you know, I log in, I see the one workstation that I have assigned to me. You can assign multiple workstations to somebody for different use cases. You can also okay. uh, change the size of them. If today you're just writing scripts in Microsoft Word, you don't need that GPU and to pay that extra money, right? Uh, uh, so it's all super dynamic. Um, but uh, uh, what... Uh, what they could do, you know, they can start their uh, start their instance if it's stopped. Um, we have uh, functionality to automatically power them down, like once you're logged out, if the CPU is under a certain threshold, uh, so that you're you're not paying for expensive GPU instances, kind of twenty four seven, but just during the periods that uh, your artists are actually using them. I can also see the uh, project I'm assigned to, which is uh, essentially a uh, FSX for Windows uh, storage array. And then right from in here, uh, can launch. Uh, this one is set up with Teradici uh, PC over IP as the display protocol. Uh, it uses the same password as the web UI because it's all SSO'd. The live demo. Yes. <laughs> So while this is loading, Ernest, let me ask you a question about this. So uh, if, if you had a, 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 a contractor or a creator of content 
and they were working on three or four different projects, you could have a workstation for uh, separate for each 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 uh, project that they're working on. Is that's is that, did I get that correct? That's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, uh, separate workstation, or you can, or you can assign multiple projects to one workstation. Um, but that also allows you to segment out your uh, your your content both for ease and security. So you know, here's game number one. These five people are working on game number one. Here's game number two. Some of the same people, and then some other people are working on that. You can either, based on kind of your your needs, you can either have the same. Uh, uh, the same workstations mounting two of them, or if you have unique, you know, kind of software loadouts that you're using to develop it, and you don't want to mess with version conflicts or whatever. Yeah, just have have one workstation that has game ones, you know, config and tools. Another one that has game two, and you know, when the other one isn't running, you're not uh, you're you're getting charged just enough for Amazon to keep the disk alive, but you're not you're not incurring the uh, uh, the majority of the charge there. So it's a great way to kind of revolutionize your workflow and, and reduce time spent by artists and, and developers doing things that aren't art and development. Um, Wonderful. But here, oh, sorry, but here, here in the demo, uh, uh, I've got my, I've got my uh, uh, network drive uh, just mounted up here. Um, and, uh, you know, I can, I can run, uh, you know, load up Blender files, load up uh, my Unreal 5 uh, projects. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, uh, we can we could do it with this and then off the local drive and it's exactly the same uh, 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 great, uh, great performance. And it's a nice and, dinosaur you have there. <laughs> yes, it's a T-Rex action. Okay. Well, Ernest, this has been really great and I really appreciate you showing us how easy it was to um, build a you know high performance workstation um, for a uh, you know a content creator to use and and do that at scale, also you know minimizing expenses and increasing productivity so that you have happy users of this as well. Uh, we need to wrap, but I'd just like to ask you a couple of final questions here, Ernest, or you know if you have anything else you want to share as well. But um, you know, this is really great. You know, besides. Besides customers that are like, I want to, you know, I'm, I'm looking to move in this direction. What help do you need to like share this kind of technology with, with additional people in the world? And what can we do here at AWS to help, you know, help you with that and anybody who watches this program? Great. So feel free and go to studiointhecloud.io to, to kind of learn more about, uh, uh, about Studio in the Cloud specifically. But what what I'd really love from anybody watching, we're trying to evolve this into a, a truly full service studio for gaming companies. And we'd love to hear from you what, what elements that a game studio in the cloud could provide that would let you worry more about creating your game and less about the infrastructure required to you know, develop, build, test, and deliver it. Uh, uh, we'd like to you know take this farther and farther into being something that you know would let you stand you know stand up a whole studio immediately and have everything you need uh to just get get to work uh and uh, uh that feedback uh, would be uh, would be great yeah we're a very feedback driven organization here at aws and six nines that's what makes our partnership so great um and without feedback you know we're we're guessing at what our customers want so by all means you know i'd ask uh first of all ernest Thank you for taking the time today to uh, share this content with, with, with people. And, and thank you for being an AWS partner. I really appreciate it. And um, you know, uh, I look forward to working with you more in the future on projects like this. If, if this was valuable to you, the people who watch this, please click the like button and give us some feedback and reach out to Ernest um, at, at the website. Give us that website one more time, Ernest. Certainly, it's studio, studio in the cloud.io. You can also find uh, me on Twitter at, at Ernest Muller. Uh, feel free and uh, feel free and hit me up there. You know, connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, uh, that sort of thing. Um, really appreciate you having me, Paul. Uh, AWS has been a great partner. The AWS Game Tech team uh, uh, is uh, has been really great about uh, uh, you know giving us feedback and working uh, working with us on client implementations. Um, 
uh, and it's uh, it's exciting, uh, exciting, fun field. Uh, uh. Yeah, I really appreciate it, Ernest, and, and thanks for joining Do Hard Things Tech View. You have a wonderful afternoon. You too. Thank you.